Thank you, Melissa. Welcome to the fourth Coral Contemplation event of Trinity Term 2021, focused on angels. Now, many religions refer to intermediaries between God and mortal beings as angels. However, there are also religions like Hinduism, where the Sanskrit word that comes the closest to angels is neither very well understood nor does it strictly translate to angels. There are also some known differences on the hierarchy of angels, which vary across you know, the universe amongst beings that are mortal or immortal across different faiths. Therefore, it would make for an interesting lecture to discover universally accepted definitions of angels and the nuanced differences that distinguish how messengers of God are understood. Thankfully, and I'm sure you'd be glad to hear this, today is not a lecture on angels. However, we'd be learning from, you know, as I've learned from you know, one of our previous guest speakers, which, who emphasized on the importance of understanding the broader picture before getting into the specifics, we have dedicated today's event to enable us to better understand the emotions that are invoked when we think about angels. And what better way to do it than to have suitable readings and music to help us? Our readings from different sources will be introduced by the respective readers. However, as always, we also have a college's wonderful choir making many contributions in today's program. This includes a beautiful melody in Paradisium, which, which means into paradise, by the renowned French composer Gabriel Faure. The second piece, Crossing the Bar by Rani Abo, was written when Abo was keeping a vigil while her husband's grandmother was in the final stages of her life. It is said that on one of those days, in an unexpectedly lucid moment, she opened her eyes and clearly said sunset and evening star, which inspired Arbo to create the setting for Tennyson's poem about a soul putting out to sea. Now, along with another work by a 16th century Spanish composer, we also have Sir William Harris's work, Bring Us, O Lord God which I personally read as a humble plea for an entry permit to a world without end. Now, try as I might, the expressiveness of my descriptions simply cannot match hearing the work themselves. Therefore, please do sit back and enjoy our choir's wonderful contributions. Thank you.
A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time.
Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus.
excuse me. Um, this is Zechariah, or Zechariah um, from the Jewish Publication Society Tanakh of 1917. It's from Nevi'im, or Prophets. And it's verse, chapter one, verses seven to 17. Upon the four and twentieth day of the eleventh month, which is the month Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, I saw in the night, and behold, a man riding upon a red horse, and he stood among the myrtle trees that were in the bottom, and behind him there were horses, red, sorrel, and white. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what are these? And the angel that spoke with me said unto me, I will show thee what these are. And the man that stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are they whom the Lord hath sent to walk to and fro the earth. And they answered the angel of the Lord that stood among the myrtle trees and said, We have walked to and fro the earth, and behold, all the earth sitteth still and is at rest. Then the angel of the Lord spoke and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou have not have compassion on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation on these threescore and ten years? And the Lord answered the angel that spoke with me with good words, even comforting words. So the angel that spoke with me said unto me, Proclaim thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy, and I am very sore displeased with the nations that are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped for evil. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I return to Jerusalem with compassions. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth over Jerusalem. Again proclaim, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, my cities shall again overflow with prosperity, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem.
Well, that was our program for today. Next week, we will return with a guest speaker who has had first-hand experience of migrating across different countries in the Middle East. We will be having Dr. Miriam Susan Rosita Khaleesi, who will be focusing on communities in Syria and Armenia. Well, before the next program, I shall pass it over to Luca on the organ for the closing performance of the evening. <laughs>